Thank you for joining us on our tour of Stirling Castle, located in Stirling, Scotland. Since travel to Scotland is mostly closed right now due to the pandemic, I decided to dig into the archives and pull out this video and photos that I took in 2019. The castle is perched on a large volcanic rock overlooking the city of Stirling and above the River Forth. This model shows the footprint of the castle as it exists today. When you first enter the castle, you'll find this directional sign to guide you along your way. In addition to the castle, Stirling is well known for the William Wallace Monument, which you can see from the castle walls. Upon entering the main gates of the castle, you will come upon the Palace Vaults. The vaults are filled with fun, interactive exhibits, especially for the younger visitors. Inside the castle, you'll find the King's Outer Chamber, which was used for more of public events and receptions. The ceiling here features replicas of the Sterling Heads, which we will see later in the Sterling Heads Gallery. Throughout the royal palace, you will find costumed interpreters who are there to kind of set the scene of the location as well as its history. The royal palace itself was one of the most best preserved Renaissance buildings in the entire United Kingdom. It has been remodeled to look as it might have looked around the 1540s. The palace tour also includes the bedrooms where the monarch slept. For whatever reason, I've been very intrigued with the fireplaces of the palace and really enjoyed the beauty of them. One of the focal points of the palace are called the Sterling Tapestries. These are replicas that took 13 years and $2 million to recreate. The originals that these were based on are located at the Metropolitan Museum of New York. One of the truly standout sections of the castle is called the Great Hall. Now the Great Hall was completed for James IV in 1503. It is the largest of its kind in Scotland and features the throne where the king and queen sat. Located within the palace are one of Scotland's greatest art treasures. You will find these in the Stirling Heads Gallery. The Stirling Heads are 16th century oak medallions carved with images of the kings, the queens, the nobles, even Roman emperors and characters from the Bible and classic mythology. These decorated the palace ceilings until a collapse in 1777. You can see the surviving plaques in the Stirling Heads gallery. As you walk around the castle, you may notice that some buildings look older than others. Most of the main buildings date from the 15th and 16th centuries. There are just a few that remain from the 14th century. Most of the outer defenses date to the early 18th century. Stirling Castle was the location of the crowning of many Scottish kings and queens, including Mary, Queen of Scots. Stirling Castle has been attacked at least eight times in recorded history. Another main feature of the castle is the Chapel Royal. It has echoes of the Great Hall in size and proportion. It was built in just seven months by James VI, who wanted somewhere to baptize his son, Prince Henry. The interior of the chapel was painted by Valentine Jenkin. His paintings were rediscovered in the 1930s and restoration began after the Second World War. By the late 1600s, the castle was used less for royalty and more for military. From 1800, the castle became owned by the War Office and was run mainly as a barracks. Be sure to check out our video of the William Wallace Monument featured here in the distance by clicking up above. Here my daughter is sitting atop one of the cannons in the Grand Battery, which was built in 1689. 
Those cannons were fired the first and last time in 1746 to defend the castle from the Jacobite army. One of the most beautiful areas of the castle can be found here, which is the Queen Anne Garden. This is located on the south side of the castle, overlooked by the Queen's lodgings and the Prince's Tower. You will find beautiful flowers and gardens, as well as an amazing view of the town of Stirling. You're welcome to take in the shade from underneath this beech tree, which is over 200 years old. As you make your way up the stairs of the walls of the Queen Anne Garden, be prepared to take in the wondrous views from the very top. While the views are enticing, my daughter seemed more focused on not stepping on cracks to avoid breaking her mother's back. While we were in Stirling, we had enough time to visit both the Stirling Castle and the William Wallace Monument. I believe we even fit in a couple other stops on the way back to Edinburgh. This plaque depicts the siege of 1651 by Oliver Cromwell. From here you'll see the amazing Old Town Cemetery and the Holy Rood Church. In this picture of the old royal gardens, notice the King's Knot formation featured there. You will see it currently entirely covered by grass, but the foundations of it can still be seen. During our trip, portions of the castle were under restoration as you see here. While this marks the end of a wonderful tour of Stirling Castle for us, let this just be the beginning for you. Since you're here, be sure to check out our other videos of Scotland as well as Ireland while on our channel. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to our channel and like this video. Thank you very much. <laughs>